My name is Paul Dansbach, and welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. This session of Training Minutes will be the third session that we've done on truss roofs. In the first session, we looked at a building that had a heavy timber wood truss roof system. It was a large manufacturing facility, and the ceiling on the first floor concealed the wood trusses above. In the second video, we looked at a mercantile occupancy, an occupancy where we might not suspect a truss roof. The truss roof was a steel frame parallel cord truss system. The appearance on top of the roof provided a flat roof surface, which may confuse firefighters or lead firefighters to believe that the building was not constructed with a truss. In our third building, we're again looking at a smaller mercantile occupancy. From the exterior of the structure, from the A side, looking from the street, we miss some size up cues. Our size up cues are actually misleading. We look at the building and do not see any form of a wood truss. If we move around to the B side of the building, again, we look up, we see a parapet wall, but what we see appears to be a flat roof. We don't see the large, rounded over roof surface that you would expect to find with a bowstring truss. Yet, this building is constructed with a heavy timber bowstring truss. We're going to walk inside and take a look at that roof system. As we enter the front door of the occupancy, we notice a suspended ceiling. An aluminum grid ceiling with tiles are in place. At this point, we still have no idea that this building has a heavy timber wood truss roof. We need to look further into the building to identify the truss roof on this building. As we walk through this occupancy, the heavy timber truss roof system is clearly obvious. The lack of a ceiling will allow firefighters to readily identify the fire's location and to be able to apply a hose stream. Once again, incident commanders need to consider the area of involvement. What's burning in the building? Is it a content fire? Is it a structure fire? Are there other parts of the structure, which in the case of this occupancy, there are other parts of the building that are not constructed with trusses? Is the fire involving the trusses? If the fire is in the trusses, do we have the opportunity to apply a heavy caliber hose stream with good reach and penetration in a few short minutes to see obvious results of that hose stream? Or must we back out and take a defensive posture because the fire has involved and taken hold in the truss space? As we walk through the occupancy, we discover skylights. The skylights provide an opportunity for quick ventilation as there are natural openings that are easily opened by firefighters. Again, we need to consider where the fire is and what's burning. Is it a content fire that hasn't affected the integrity of the trusses? Or has the fire started out as a content fire and gained significant headway and is now involving the structures? Those factors need to be considered before we commit firefighters to interior firefighting operations and exterior roof ventilation operations. As we walk through the structure, we notice there are other rooms and spaces. We must understand the type of roof that's on each one of these rooms or spaces. The room behind us has a wood joisted roof, a flat roof, independent of the heavy timber bowstring truss. Therefore, a fire in this room or space can be fought just like any other structure fire that does not involve a truss roof system. As we entered the structure through the front door, we encountered a ceiling. Here is another door that leads directly into the working area of this building. Firefighters can access the building via this door. Through this door, with a hose stream, they have direct access to the trusses. Should the fire be up in the trusses, placement of a large caliber hose stream with good reach and penetration operated from this doorway may darken the fire down. Should that be the case, firefighters can continue to operate from a safe distance while continuing to knock down the main body of fire. Should firefighters place a line in service in such a manner and the hose stream have no impact on the fire up in the truss space, firefighters must withdraw to a defensive position because the fire has gained significant hold in the truss space and interior operations are not an option as the trusses are heavily involved in fire and in danger of collapse. We're back outside, and to reinforce our size-up lesson, 
we're again looking at the B side of the structure. And what we don't see from the outside, looking around the building, particularly at the B side, is the truss roof. We must always do a size up. We must always look at the building from the exterior for a size up cue to identify the type of construction in a roof structure. Unfortunately, that will not always give us the correct information. Pre-plan information, reports from the roof, reports from interior crews are all part of a constant and ongoing size up at any fire scene. Thanks for watching this session of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.